In the full spectrum of your career, NASA, the Senate, where does the Axiom mission rank in the history of US space exploration? Well, it's an inflection point for NASA. Why is that? Uh, because we've always been a government program. But 12 years ago, when uh, Kay Bailey Hutchinson and I passed the legislation setting NASA on the new course, there's a commercial component along with the government, a dual track. And that's what we're seeing the beginning as the fulfillment. We've had commercial crew, we've had commercial cargo to the station. Now we have a private astronaut mission and this same company is going to attach a module, a commercial module to the space station. So it's a new era for NASA. So we're pretty fixated on four private, three fee paying citizens going up to ISS, but I guess Talk to me about the long-term vision about shifting resources, right? If the private sector takes the burden of space station travel, what does that free NASA up to do? Well, that's the whole idea. We want to get out of low Earth orbit uh, after 2030, and we're extending the station until 2030. We want there to be commercial stations. Then NASA can lease space right. on them, and that gives us the opportunity to focus our energy and our resources out there, right? Out there in the heavens, because we're going back we're to the moon Mars and, Mars. and Mars, and how about all the exploration like James Webb Telescope and all of that? So I caught up with Kathy Leaders on Thursday. She's very busy. You're very busy. The range is very busy. Something like Axiom, has it been hard to fit it in alongside all the other launches and projects that NASA has going on? Well, I love it. When we have a traffic jam, this is great. Is that how you describe it, a traffic oh, jam? Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, the range can only take so much, although that efficiency will increase. Right. <laughs> and we are going to see one a day, sometimes two launches a day in the future. Four private citizens. One American, one Canadian, one Israeli, one Spanish. They're going to the International Space Station. There are three Russian cosmonauts currently aboard ISS. Will they have dinner together at 250 miles above the Earth? Of course, three Russians, three Americans, right. and one German astronaut on the permanent crew that's up there. Yes, this is an ISS. What does that stand for? International Space Station. But you know what I'm saying, that sure. tensions here on Earth between yeah. the US and Russia are high. And, and look at the level, easy as you go, professional relationship between the cosmonauts and the astronauts. And you expect that to, of to be the case, even with the, the Axiom crew in particular I'm talking about. Even with the terrible things that Vladimir Putin is putting on the Ukrainian people, I expect the professional relationship between astronauts and cosmonauts to continue okay. for the sake of our civilian space program in both countries, as well as the history that remember back in the midst of the Cold War of the Soviet Union, right. we had Apollo Soyuz and that broke the ice. I have to ask you, your counterpart Dmitry Rogozin, he, he's been pretty hardline on the situation in terms of space, saying sanctions, economic trade could lead to Russia pulling out of ISS. Do you see that happening? Uh, frankly, no, because I believe that the Russian uh, government is committed to the civilian space program just like the Soviet government was right. back as far back as 1975. I want to ask you this, it's not necessarily linked to the conflict in Ukraine, it's linked to SpaceX, but do you see a, an outcome where NASA uses Soyuz this year, next year, the year after? Do, do you need to if you have SpaceX? We hope to okay. because we have cosmonauts in Houston training to right. fly on the space shuttle. We're going to send a, an astronaut uh, to fly as we have on Soyuz. Look, Mark Vandehei just came back after a year in space Was on that difficult? the Soyuz. It wasn't difficult at all. This is the professional relationship 
that is going on between the cosmonauts and the astronauts. All right, final question before I lose you. Sum up 2022 for NASA. It's a massive year. Oh, we're going to hit an asteroid, move it out. We're going to bring in Casual. pictures that have been light traveling for 13 and a half billion years back to the beginning of the universe. Uh, we're going to launch Artemis 1. We're going to continue the commercial crew to the station. Would you like me to keep going? No, I get it. But humor me for one last question. You've got your options now. SpaceX, Blue Origin, Virgin Galactic. When are you going to go up back to space, Senator Nelson? And we're going to have Starliner. OK, so you have more and options. And we're going to have competition for the lander on the moon in addition to SpaceX. So anyone sent you an invite? Well, look, <laughs> you know, it's time to move out of the mindset of the Apollo generation. We are now in the Artemis generation. We're going back to the moon and we're going to Mars. And uh, I'm going to support those guys to the hilt.